<laughs> oh my god! So we are the cool. only ones here. We might get a whole tram to ourselves. Welcome back to our channel, guys. We have just spent a good part of a week in the bustling city of Hong Kong. It's just amazing. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> Blows our minds. And in this video, we are going to be sharing with you the top things to do while you are in this epic city. Oh, oh my God, so oh good. Of all the places we have been to, Hong Kong has to be one of the most vibrant and exciting cities in Asia. It offers such a huge range of experiences, from its bustling city streets and towering skyscrapers, Michelin star food and delicious cafes, to its serene natural parks and stunning beaches. So whether you are a first time visitor or a seasoned traveler, there is always something new to discover in Hong Kong. So let's get stuck in and start with number one on our list, the Avenue of Stars. Get ready to step into the glitz and glamour of Hong Kong's movie industry with a visit to the iconic Avenue of Stars, one of the most liked Hong Kong experiences for city checkpoints. And welcome to the Avenue of Stars. This promenade is located along the waterfront of Victoria Harbour in Sim Sa Choi and is a tribute to the city's film industry and its most famous stars. Oh, she's actually got the same size hands as me. That never happens because I have such tiny hands. That's awesome. The promenade itself stretches for over 400 metres and has incredible views of the Hong Kong skyline. There are life-size sculptures of popular Hong Kong actors and actresses, handprints and of course, you cannot visit this spot without getting a picture with the legend himself, Bruce Lee. Okay, so we've made it to City Hall. I think we need to go to the second floor and that is where our lunch awaits. Number two, try dim sum. Going to Hong Kong and not trying dim sum is like visiting Paris and not seeing the Eiffel Tower you would be missing out on one of the most liked Hong Kong experiences for food. I'm going in. Oh, it's a sticky one. I'm going to do it in one go. Oh, like a champ. We recommend heading to a restaurant like Maxim's Palace where you can soak up the whole experience whilst overlooking the harbour on Hong Kong Island. Dim sum is a traditional Cantonese cuisine, which is servings of bite-sized portions of steamed or fried dumplings, buns and other savoury dishes. They're often served in bamboo baskets or on small plates. Dim sum is usually served either for brunch or as a lunchtime meal, and during these times, it can get very busy. You're not the only ones who want dim sum for lunch. So whether it's biting into delicious cha siu bao or fresh ha gao, we're pretty sure it will leave your taste buds begging for more. Nice Lunch is done. It came to around 60 Australian dollars, so about 315 Hong Kong dollars. Now of course you can get cheaper dim sum in other parts of Hong Kong. You can probably get even more expensive dim sum as well. But considering the atmosphere, the traditional kind of dim sum experience, it was very reasonable. Now you can't really call yourself a proper foodie if you haven't experienced a Dai Pai Dong before. These stores offer a wide variety of affordable and tasty dishes such as noodles, rice, soups and dim sum. Oh, my. So we have fish balls and fish cake, noodle soup. We have a wonton soup and we have a noodles in like an oyster soy sauce and they come with a complimentary side of soup as well. Dai Pai Dongs are usually open air or semi outdoor and visiting a store like this offers a true and authentic experience of local cuisine. The dishes here are usually prepared fresh. They are also at a very affordable price making them a great option for budget conscious travellers. Oh, so good. It's an amazing way to mingle with the locals, try authentic cuisines and immerse into Hong Kong's vibrant street food culture. Oh, that was banging. Okay, so I don't know how much that was because Alex got the bill. However, going by Alex's expression when I asked her how much it was, and she said, just wait until we tell the vlog. It was 130 Hong Kong dollars. Which is what? 20 dollars. 20 bucks? 20 Australian all dollars. All that. Probably one of the tastiest meals we've had since been in Hong Kong so far. So, oh my god. So we are the only <laughs> ones here. We might get a whole tram to ourselves. The Peak Tram first opened its doors in 1888, and after multiple upgrades, you can now ride the sixth generation Peak Tram all the way to the top of Victoria Peak. The ride itself though is a must do experience for anyone visiting Hong Kong. And the bonus at the end of the journey is epic views waiting for you across the entire city. You can pay a separate fee to walk out onto the Sky Terrace, which is the highest viewing platform in Hong Kong. Unfortunately, we picked a bit of a cloudy day, but on a clear day, this is what you can expect. It is pretty amazing. 
Next on the list is visiting the Situ Centre. This is a relatively new and very cool performing arts venue that is dedicated to showcasing traditional Chinese opera or Situ. It has a really unique design that's inspired by the shape of a traditional Chinese lantern with lots of curves and angles that definitely makes it stand out from the other buildings in the area. Inside there are all kinds of spaces for performances, workshops and other events. Check out the space behind us. It's insane. Architecturally it's just amazing. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> blows our minds. So this brings us on to another activity, watching a Cantonese opera. Cantonese opera is a combination of singing, acting and martial arts all rolled up into one awesome performance. The performers wear amazing costumes and makeup that make them look like characters from a fantastical world and the music is super memorable with a live mini orchestra beside the stage. If you've never seen it before then you're in for a treat. We weren't able to film during the performance so you'll just have to come here and enjoy this one yourself. And next on our list is M+. If you're a fan of contemporary art, then a visit to the M+, in Hong Kong is an absolute must. This place definitely has that kind of Tate Modern London vibe. It definitely does. Like square, concrete jungle, but really, really cool. Actually very excited to go in and have a closer look at a lot of the exhibitions that are on show. There is everything from immersive installations and amazing exhibits from some of the world's most talented artists. So whilst you can get into the M Plus Museum for free, they often have very cool exhibitions. And there's a particular one that we want to see that we've just purchased tickets for called a Yayoi Kusama. And that was 240 Hong Kong dollars per person. I think it is going to be very worth it. And I think we might head there first. She is a Japanese artist who makes trippy and colorful art installations with lots of polka dots and mirrors. Her work is all about exploring infinity and repetition and it's had a big impact on the art world. Our favourite part was this room where you could only enter inside for 30 seconds. But before leaving the gallery, don't forget to head downstairs and visit next on the list, the Curator Cafe. Time for some coffee. The Curator Creative Cafe is a super cool spot in the M Plus where you can grab a bite and just chill out. They've got lots of options like coffee, pastries, sandwiches and salads. But the number one thing to do here is to order the artsy print coffee. We picked a print from Yayoi's exhibition and had it printed onto our coffee. It did cost 98 Hong Kong dollars, which was a bit on the pricey side and probably the most we've ever spent on coffee. But can you say you've ever drunk art before? I'm a little bit scared to ruin this artwork. Let's give it a go. <laughs> I've ruined it. Does it taste good? It's good. Nice and creamy. Now that we've mentioned coffee, let's talk more about coffee. So if you're a coffee lover like us, then you're in luck. Hong Kong's coffee scene is booming. Coming from Australia where the coffee is excellent, we admit our standards are pretty high. And wow, did we find so many amazing coffee spots. Our top three favorite coffee places in no particular order were not speciality coffee. This was probably one of the best coffees we may have ever had. We were also shocked they stocked our favorite oat milk, Oatly. The interior was modern and minimalistic and the coffee guys, well, they really know what they're doing. That is a good coffee. <laughs> Next is the Baker and Bottleman. This is our kind of, I like the look of it. cafe. Yeah, boy. The interior here was super chilled with a laid back vibe. They bake a lot of their pastries in house so you know they're fresh. Just when you thought that was enough, they also serve wine of an evening, with this being a very prominent feature throughout the place. So, two of our favourite things that they sell. I mean, it's only nine o'clock, but you can have one at that. I was going to say, why are we having a flat white? <laughs> Let's have a flat red. <laughs> oh, I do love a good glass of red wine. Last but not least, 90s coffee. Another great coffee spot based in Causeway on Hong Kong Island, which focuses on speciality coffee using only high quality beans that are roasted in-house, sourced from some amazing parts of the world. Coffee was good. So let's get back to food, trying the local desserts. We are taking a short 10 minute walk to go and find some of Hong Kong's famous egg tarts. Explore the sweet side of Hong Kong's cuisine and try some local desserts like egg tarts and waffles. If you want a couple of our recommendations, then Tai Chong Bakery is a great place to try egg tarts with stores dotted around Hong Kong. And here they are, oh. the famous egg tarts. Now you can get egg tarts anywhere in Hong Kong, but this particular one has been going since 1950 and has a very good reputation. Now I personally absolutely love egg tarts and I cannot wait to try this one. This was only 10 Hong Kong dollars, which is about two Australian dollars. So pretty good value for money as well. Enjoy. This is so good. <laughs> they actually feel quite warm as well. One of the best egg tarts I've ever had. 
Taewo Tang Cafe was the perfect place to check out bubble waffles, which is a popular street food snack made from batter and cooked in a special griddle that gives them the unique aesthetic and texture. It was so good. Up next is using the public transport. Now this might sound like a strange one to include in top things to do, but using the transportation is an experience in itself. And whilst we're talking about public transport, we will quickly share with you a top tip to getting around Hong Kong, and that is by purchasing the Octopus Card. An Octopus Card is a contactless smart card, which is going to be your number one go-to during your time in Hong Kong. You can use it on all public transport from trains, trams, buses, ferries, to even taxis. And you can also use it to purchase goods in fast food stores, coffee shops, and convenience stores. We picked up our Octopus card from a vending machine as soon as we landed at the airport and it was super easy to top back up again whenever we were running low. Now there are three unique ways to get around Hong Kong with the first being the ferry. The ferry connects Kowloon side and Hong Kong Island and is an amazing way to experience Hong Kong from the water. From the top deck, you'll get incredible views of that iconic skyline. It was one of our favorite ways to experience the city and it only cost four Hong Kong dollars. I can't believe how cheap it is to go on the lower deck with only two Hong Kong dollars 60, which I swear is like less than 50 cents. So cheap, I can't believe that. Another fun way to get around Hong Kong is by using the tram. It is also known as the Ding Ding due to its iconic bell sound and it has been operating for over a hundred years. I feel like we're on Harry Potter's bus. It, it <laughs> you know, does like the really like long, that. skinny ones. <laughs> this is so cool. The trams are double decker with the upper deck offering great views. They move at a slow pace, which gives you plenty of opportunity to take in the sights of the city. We honestly have no idea where we're going. If we're going in the right direction, but it seems like we are. The MTR is also a great way to get around Hong Kong as it covers all the major areas. So the MTR is so easy to use. It's really well signposted and it's one of the best modes of transport to get around Hong Kong. The trains are air conditioned and super comfortable. They run frequently and are also known for being on time. The MTR was the mode of transport that we used the majority of the time down to the convenience, speed and price. This is that, central. And up next on the top things to do in Hong Kong is ride the Nongping 360. So from Hong Kong station to Tong Chong was pretty straightforward. We basically grabbed the orange Tong Chong line and we were here within about 20 minutes. And the reason that we are here at Tong Chong station is because we are going to be going on the Nongping 360. And if you don't know what the Nongping 360 is, we're about to show you. We actually booked our tickets for the Nongping cable car online. You can buy them on the day, which some people do do, but depending on how busy it is, we definitely recommend booking in advance online because you do get to cut the queues if you already have your tickets. The cable car connects Tung Chung with Nongping Village and it takes around 25 minutes each way. Oh my god, we got our own private cabin! How good is this? There are three types. You've got the standard traditional cable car, which has a closed bottom for those people who aren't the thrill seekers like Alex and I. Then you have the crystal cabin car, which is what we have. And then there is the recent addition, which is the crystal plus. Now the difference with that is, I believe these sides here, all the way around, are clear as well. It's like 85, 90% all glass. We opted for the crystal cabin, but it is quite trippy. When I say thrill seekers, you're literally standing on a piece of glass. It's a long way down. On the journey, you have breathtaking views of the South China Sea, as well as unobstructed views of Hong Kong's lush mountains from up high. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> We're literally in just a massive cloud. Oh my God, this is so creepy. You can't see anything underneath. I actually quite like the it's moodiness. It's so cool. It's, it's a so bit cool. surreal. This is amazing. This is so cool. Do you have to get off here? I don't know. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> this also takes us nicely onto our next top thing to do. Lantau Island. If you're a nature lover and like walking, this is definitely the place for you. So as soon as you leave the cable car, you pretty much walk into like a little village. It's got loads of restaurants and bars, coffee shops. So if you are gonna be here for the whole day, don't worry, you don't need to bring a packed lunch. There's plenty of food here, but we are gonna go straight past the village for now and head to the very famous Big Buddha. Big Buddha. A giant bronze statue that's almost as tall as the Statue of Liberty. I mean, I'm a bit annoyed there's no escalator, <laughs> but we'll give it a go. You got this, come on. It's a pretty great way to get our steps in for the day, isn't it? <laughs> 
The Big Buddha is the world's largest seated outdoor Buddha, which actually weighs 250 tons. Welcome to the Big Buddha. I don't think we need to explain why this place is called the Big Buddha. As you can see, it is rather huge. It's like ginormous. <laughs> it's so windy. I don't even know if you can hear me. I'll give it a go anyway. Now, the Big Buddha is not the only thing to see here. There's actually the Polin Monastery, which is right beside it. And you can actually see it from the top of that hill when you are actually next to the Big Buddha as well. It's a very beautiful monastery. Let's go take a closer look. It's actually a lot more peaceful inside than it is outside. It feels like there's a monsoon outside, but in here it's very tranquil. You can even hear birds chirping as well. So you're not actually allowed to film inside the Polin Monastery, but we can confirm it is absolutely beautiful. And I guess you'll just have to come here yourself to experience it. Going by what the outside looks like, you kind of have an idea what the interior <laughs> looks like. Absolutely beautiful. After this, take the 15 minute walk to see the Wisdom Path, an outdoor trail with wooden poles inscribed with Buddhist prayers, the perfect place to relax and take a walk. It's such a really nice place to so just come, take your time, have a little stroll, take in kind of like the atmosphere or the cloud if you're like us. And it's just something extra to do on top of Tiantan Buddha as well as the Polin Monastery. Okay, so let's go to our next up on the list. Visiting Manmo Temple. Visiting this temple is like taking a step back in time to old Hong Kong where incense smoke fills the air. This beautiful historic temple is located in the heart of Xiongwan and is dedicated to the gods of literature and war. It's an absolutely beautiful place to soak up the temple's serene ambience and must do for anyone interested in Hong Kong's history and culture. And while we are sharing beautiful temples with you, another one you should definitely add to the list is this temple. Wong Tai Sin Temple. And after a quick 30 second walk outside of the station, we have made it to Wong Tai Sin Temple. This temple is located in Kowloon and is dedicated to the Taoist deity Wong Tai Sin, who is believed to have healing powers and the ability to bring good fortune. There is a sea of brightly coloured lanterns and much like Man Mo Temple, the scent of incense fills the air. The temple's energy is infectious with visitors of all ages and backgrounds and they come to pay their respects or simply soak up the atmosphere here. So if you're looking for an adventure that's equal parts cultural immersion and sensory overload, head to Wong Tai Sin Temple and prepare to be wowed. And of course, no evening in Hong Kong would be complete without a trip to a rooftop bar and we are heading to I Bar. Does it get much better than sipping on a glass of wine with views like these? It's an amazing way to spend the evening, soaking up the ambience and watching the sunset over that famous Hong Kong skyline. We visited Ibar, located on the Kowloon side, but there are so many award-winning rooftops to choose from. Take your pick. Next up is visiting a night market. If you're looking for a vibrant and lively place to experience Hong Kong's local culture, a night market is the way to go. Guys, we have made it to Temple Street. This is, would you say, Hong Kong's largest and liveliest shopping strip. I think it does everything you can think of from trinkets and teeps to clothing to food to drinks everything i think it has everything it's a pretty cool place to check out at night because it only really starts to get going after sunset so we've arrived around 6 pm the sun is pretty much set now so we're gonna go check it out let's go explore it's so fun to take a stroll down the streets, check out the different goods on sale, eat the street food, and check out the entertainment that will stimulate all the senses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 20 Hong Kong dollars, which is like four Australian for a belt. It's not bad. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Now, if you want to discover more history, then try visiting Taekwon. So welcome to Taekwon, which is the centre for heritage and arts in Hong Kong. This place was somewhere we actually stumbled upon and we're so glad we did. Taekwon used to be a former police station compound, but it has now been turned into a cultural center with art exhibitions, shops, and restaurants. You can even check out the old jail cells and the exhibitions here are free. I mean, there's no nice ceiling height to it. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to stay in here though. It's a great spot to wander for a couple hours on Hong Kong Island. Next up is heading to K11 Musea. K11 Musea is located on the promenade and is a big playground for art lovers, shopaholics and foodies. This place is seriously cool. It's like a museum that you can shop in, has amazing installations and exhibits. Plus there are some great eats and views from the rooftop. It's the perfect way to spend an afternoon getting lost in creativity and indulging. 
Now, you can't visit Hong Kong and not watch the Symphony of Lights on the harbour. At 8pm every evening, you can watch the Symphony of Lights on the Kowloon side of the harbour. It's a lively and colourful display where the buildings across the harbour are lit up and change colours to music. A beautiful show and the perfect way to end an evening on the promenade. So guys, that just about rounds up our top things to do in Hong Kong. Whether you're a foodie, a culture enthusiast or an adventure seeker, Hong Kong offers a wealth of exciting activities and experiences for travellers and is sure to leave you with unforgettable memories. So what are you waiting for? Time to book your tickets, pack your bags and get ready to say hello Hong Kong. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for more travel tips and inspiration. See you on the next video.